I now invite Ms. Vinnie Vianjima, Executive Director of the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS, to make a statement. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, colleagues, and friends, thank you, General Assembly President Boskill, co-facilitators, Ambassador Goetz of Namibia, and Ambassador Fifield of Australia, and all member states. Together, you've drafted, negotiated, and delivered the political declaration. It will be the basis of our work to end this pandemic that has ravaged communities for 40 years. <clears throat> AIDS is not over. It is one of the deadliest pandemics of modern times. Since the start of the pandemic, 77 and a half million people have been infected with HIV globally. And we have lost nearly 35 million people to AIDS. An AIDS death every minute is an emergency. HIV rates are not following the trajectory that we together promised. Indeed, amidst the fallout from the COVID crisis, we could even see a resurgent pandemic. But a never-ending HIV pandemic is not our fate. Even in spite of all the setbacks, we can end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030, as we promised, if the world comes together. <clears throat> Business as usual, however, will fail us. The programs that have secured substantial progress will not enable us to finish the journey because the road is blocked. The evidence and analysis is clear. Inequalities in power, in status, in rights and voice are driving the HIV pandemic. Inequalities kill. As the global AIDS strategy sets out, to end AIDS, we have to end the inequalities which perpetuate it. <clears throat> There's another huge benefit to this approach, because the same laws, policies, and strong people-centered health services needed to end AIDS will also help the world overcome COVID-19, be ready to tackle future pandemics, and support inclusive economic growth and the human rights of all. We will all do better. <clears throat> Here are three bold shifts we need to take together. One, we need to end inequalities in access to health technologies by spurring the best science and getting it to everyone. COVID-19 showed that science moves at the speed of political will. We need to speed up aid science by investing in innovations, in treatment, prevention, care, and vaccines as global public goods. And we need to deploy science in ways that shrink instead of grow inequalities. For example, Let's get the new long-acting antiretroviral medicines that will make it easier to treat and prevent HIV to women and girls and key populations in the global south first, not years after the rich countries have access. Let us ensure that all medicines which can prevent deaths of people living with HIV are manufactured by multiple producers 
including producers in the Global South, affordably. We need funding, but we also need to reform failing rules of intellectual property and support globally distributed production so that access to life-saving science is no longer dependent on the passport you hold. Two, we need to end the inequalities in access to essential services by delivering on guaranteed health and education for everyone. For many countries, new HIV infections have become rare, and living long, fulfilling lives with HIV is the norm. But within and between countries, a widening gap separates those who have prevention, treatment, and care services, and who have respect for their human rights, and those who are excluded inequality. Today, we are setting bold, ambitious goals to reach 95% of those in need with HIV treatment and prevention. To get there, we need to reimagine HIV services, making them easy to access and designed around people's lives, meeting their needs. We need to ensure all girls complete secondary education and are empowered with the full set of services and rights. We need to end user fees for essential services, providing those services through public systems which integrate also community provided services funded by taxation. We need to combat tax avoidance, which impedes domestic resourcing for health and education. We must no longer allow the burden of debt to undermine expansion of HIV and health services. We need debt restructuring to overcome the COVID-19 shock and the establishment of a fair debt crisis resolution mechanism. We need to step up, not step back on aid as 0.7% of gross national income by all developed countries and ensure that as much as possible of the IMF's $650 billion special drawing rights flows to low and middle income countries. <clears throat> and three, we need to end the inequalities in the realization of rights, particularly for people living with HIV and those at risk to or affected by HIV. I applaud member states' commitment to reform laws and protect rights. The evidence shows that when laws are strengthened to support gender equality, the rights of key populations and confront stigmatization, countries have made greater progress in treatment and prevention programs, benefiting everyone. They've rolled back HIV. We need to keep moving forward in our common journey away from harmful, punitive, outdated, often colonial laws and from all forms of discrimination. <clears throat> this moment calls for us to work together across sectors, across countries. Populism's false promises are proving no match to biology, as COVID reminds us. We're not just interconnected. We are inseparable. 
We cannot end AIDS in one country or one continent. We can only end AIDS everywhere. I pay tribute to the civil society groups from across the world whose fight against inequalities has been the spur to action. You, communities, women's groups, and grassroots movements across the world have constantly pushed us. At times, that pushing has been uncomfortable, I admit, but my message to you is keep pushing us all. Keep the fight on. Pressure from the power of people is key to ending inequalities and ending AIDS. Martin Luther King said, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. He didn't mean this process is automatic. No, as he noted, social progress never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of people, the tireless efforts of people. The trajectory of new HIV infections and AIDS deaths will not through business as usual, bend down. But we can pull it down. Let's pull it down. We cannot be neutral on inequalities. No, we can't. To get back on track to ending AIDS, we must be deliberate in confronting them. The only alternative is a vicious cycle of injustice illness and emergency. The most unrealistic thing we could do now is to imagine that we can overcome our crisis through minor adjustments or tinkering. We can't. Whether we are remembered as promise breakers or promise keepers, as failures or victors, as the people who ended AIDS, or only as the people who could have ended AIDS, is up to us. It's up to us. Epidemics magnify our worst traits, inequalities, injustices, and fear. But also, inequalities magnify our best traits, ingenuity, resilience, and courage. Excellencies, I'm confident we will win together. I thank you.